Hello everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're gonna take a look at creating this sort of walk-by, sliding, parallax transition, depending on how much movement you introduce into it with the camera. I do wanna just give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, that's MSI. They've sent me the laptop on which we're gonna be performing the edit today. Uh, and it's a beast of a laptop, it's called the Creator 15. I have a link to all of the awesome features and just why this laptop is incredible uh, down in the description to this video. You can check that out. If you're in the market for a new laptop, just give it a shot. Check it out uh, and see if you like it. I've been using it for like six months. It's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. A lot of neat features and a lot of cool stuff. And you'll see we're going to edit some heavy 4K footage from my 5D Mark IV, which is just... 4K footage is big. 4K footage off of the 5D Mark IV is like, if you tried to make 4K footage as big and bulbous and unwieldy as possible, that's exactly how you'd have your 4K footage. So uh, it takes already big footage, makes it even more difficult to work with. We're gonna work with it on this laptop and you're gonna see it's gonna blow it out of the water. It's pretty cool. But uh, in addition to that, uh, this effect, uh, most of this effect is made in camera um, and you're going to do it by just panning from one side to another with two different shots and typically you just put a blocker object in front of your camera. So you'll see in a lot of the shots of this laptop that I take, I just pass the camera by a C-stand. The C-stand really close to the camera's lens so it forms this big sort of blob of unrecognizable stuff and as both of these objects um, are being passed in front of the camera, the, the one foreground object in one shot and a foreground object in the second shot, we make the switch and we fade it together in Premiere um, and it's pretty cool. It's actually really easy to do and it's a whole lot of fun. Again, a lot of it comes in the camera and you're gonna see I have a second uh, version of this where I've used a motorized slider. We don't all have motorized sliders, I get it. You can do this by hand, you can do it with a, with a gimbal as well. Um, it really doesn't matter, but there are upsides and downsides like everything to either this or that technique. Um, so let's jump into Premiere Pro right now and take a look at this thing. Whew, that was a bit of an introduction. I've been away for a little while, as a lot of you know. Uh, but here we are in Premiere Pro. I do have a little bit of a different layout than you're probably used to in Premiere, but that's just because to, I, I've been trying to figure out how to maximize the rectangular space afforded to me in Premiere uh, absolutely the best and still have my face here on screen that everybody can see. Um, so this is what we've got. Um, I do have this sequence set up here and you can see I've got motorized walk by as well and just real quick I can show you what we're dealing with so you can see this is just motorized slider I'm sitting there at a bench outside we transition and it's as if this wall has appeared and boom we're inside and I'm inside um, big advantage to having something like a motorized slider is twofold that being smooth consistent speed you can adjust how fast or slow it is as well um, and also like this is just a one-man deal here I just set up the shot and I you know set the slider to start sliding and then I went and I sat down and let the camera do its thing. So both these shots, it was just me out there doing my thing uh, and it was what it was. So really easy to do. Whereas with handheld stuff, you're going to need somebody else to film you um, or in the case of stuff like uh, this laptop here, I'm just hand holding and shooting a, 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 a static object forgetting what I'm saying here. I'm just shooting this object, but you can see I just passed by that C stand. So that will be our moment of transition and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So let's get started with all that out of the way. It's been a long time since I've been back. So my tra my uh, my intros are not very smooth. All right, so I've got 4K footage. I've got just standard 1080p footage. We're gonna work with the 4K footage and I'm gonna go with these first two shots here. I'm gonna drag them onto my timeline so I can just hold down shift and select both of them and drag them down to my timeline onto video track number one. We're not gonna have a focus on audio at all so I can just hold down my alter option key and uh, get rid of this audio. So alter option allows you to just select the audio and not the video. And now we have this, don't worry about these two markers here. Those are just because I've already gone in and marked out where I begin seeing the blocker object coming into frame. So that's an important moment in your footage where the blocker object is beginning to appear. Now, I didn't really give myself much in the way of a lead in here before the transition is going to begin. All right, so let's let's uh, take a look at this. By the way, if you wanna drop a marker, it's as easy as just select the clip and hit the letter M and it's gonna put a marker there wherever your playhead is. All right, so 
Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drag this footage all the way up to track number three, and we're gonna drag our second shot up to track number two. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to place some kind of color underneath it just to really uh, boomify what we're about to do, really make it clear. So I'm gonna hit new item over here in my project panel and choose color matte, and I'm gonna hit okay, and we're just gonna choose a color that's very noticeable. I'm gonna go with a green, very noticeable, but also not so harsh that it's just blasting our eyeballs out of our head. And I'm gonna drag this color mat down underneath our two video clips and just stretch it out. So you can see, you don't even see the color mat unless the video isn't there. So it's just gonna make it very clear that none of this is seeing through, and we're not seeing through to any weird backgrounds that we don't wanna see. But also, when we begin to mask away our video, you'll be able to see exactly what happens. So speaking of masking away video, let's do that. Let's come over here to effects and I'm gonna look for the crop effect. It's under video effects transform crop Let's drag it down and drop it on our first walk by clip All right, so uh, right there around the marker is where we see our foreground object appearing So let's go to the effect controls panel and just scroll down here and we're gonna hit the little stopwatch next to the right button That's gonna drop a keyframe right there and we're also gonna feather the edge now we're gonna feather the edge a lot this is 4k footage not 1080p so for a 1080p shot we might be able to get away with 150 uh, edge feather we're gonna go for like 450 so we're gonna go with a massive edge feather um, and this is this is just it doesn't look like we did anything we just set the stage to be able to do something and what we're gonna do here is just move this footage over until the blocker object is all the way on the other side of our frame and we're gonna increase the right up to 100%. So there you go. And you can see now we have two keyframes. And what's happening is as this footage moves, it's going to do that where it just blurs and fades away. Now we may have to adjust this when we slide our footage underneath this. We might have to kind of, you know, move it around a little bit and see what works best. And we'll be able to do that. It's all very editable. So speaking of that, let's grab our walk by footage here. And you can see, by the way, the green color mat is showing us exactly what's happening. It's much easier to see what's going on now. All right. So the walk by footage and what I'm going to look for for the walk by footage is where the blocker object is coming into frame. And like I said, I, I added that little marker to kind of know where that was. So that's nice. I'm gonna bring this over and I'm gonna see how it kind of lines up. So you can see right here, we have what looks like two blocker objects. The, the goal is to have both those blocker objects kind of lined up on top of each other or at least blended together in such a way uh, that you, you can't tell that it's two different objects, right? Because we want it to look seamless. So we'll keep nudging our video back and back and back and uh, getting it to line up as close as possible, right? So on a Windows machine, you would hold down your control key or your alt key, I'm sorry, I'm thinking command on the Mac, it's alt on the PC, and just keep nudging that back. You can hold down shift to nudge in larger increments, and let's go see how close we are. We're getting closer. We may need to trim off the front of our clip a little bit to allow us to keep moving it back. I'm gonna nudge it back, and you can see I can just nudge here until it Basically lines up and blends in perfectly. Now you do have to be careful with handheld clips because if the clips are moving at different speeds. This is gonna move out of sync over a period of time. But as you get better at doing your pans and drifts with the camera by hand, you'll just get better at it and you'll be able to have a more consistent speed shot the shot. So that's obviously a good thing. That's something you don't really have to worry about with a motorized shot. Um, but you can see here, what we're doing is, let's just uh, bring this up to a larger size here. As we scrub through this, we're able to just go from one shot of the laptop seamlessly over to another shot. And then of course the, the video footage just ends so we get our, our wonderful green mat underneath there, but we don't really need that off the end of our clip. So here, let's just bring this up and let's, let's try playing through it here. There we have it. And there's our transition looking nice and smooth. Now it's a little jumpy and bouncy at the beginning because again, like I said, I didn't give this enough lead in. So the footage is all jittery and messy. And now let's take this shot and we can apply a little color grade to it because that makes things even more graphically intense on top of really heavy footage and on top of two heavy types of footage playing with that massive fade going on. So let's go back to our project panel and add an adjustment layer. I'm gonna hit okay. And we're gonna drag this adjustment layer out on top of our video footage. We're gonna do it for both shots because if we apply a color LUT uh, or grading, whatever, to this adjustment layer, it's gonna just sprinkle down through all of the um, tracks beneath it. So that's perfect for our purposes. And we are going to go to effects and I'm gonna look for a Lumetri color. 
Now, normally I would um, normally I would just go right for a, a color lumetry, like the the entire color workspace is what I'm trying to uh, think of. But I don't want it to mess up my layout here on screen, so I'm just going to stick with this. And then I'm going to go to effect controls, and I'm going to have all this stuff here. So let's just do some basic stuff. Let's go basic correction uh, for white balance. Let's reduce this, like maybe going like negative 15. That's going to make the shots more blue. And we'll push the tint up plus 15. That's going to make them more purple. And collapse white balance. For tone and exposure, I'm not going to mess with that. We're going to use curves in a second. Uh, it's a super colorful shot, but why not make it more colorful? Let's push the saturation up. You know, let's make it 125 just to really make it obscenely saturated. Uh, under creative, the only thing I'm going to do is maybe throw a little sharpness in there. Let's go 30 on the sharpness, uh, which is actually kind of a lot. Uh, and then we'll go curves here. And then for the curves, what we'll do is we'll drop a, an anchor point right in the middle here. In fact, I'm going to do this just by eye. So I'm going to just bring this up to full screen. What I want to do is just darken the shadows a bit and increase the highlights more than I darken the shadows. And then I'm going to go to the blue channel and I'm just going to pull up for the darkest point that's going to flood the shadows with blue. And let's get out of here. And you can see the shot here, uh, how it's looking. In fact, if I collapse my lumetri color and I just hit the little FX icon, there's before and there's after. So we're just intensifying and just really uh, making it look very intense. And you can see both of those uh, color effects are added. They're just added to both shots. So adjustment layer is useful. All right, so let's come to the beginning of our shot. Hit I to uh, set the in point, And then we'll set the out point right over here, just like that. Just a you know little whatever, six, seven, eight second clip. And then we're going to hit Control M, which is going to bring up our export dialog box. And here with the export dialog, I'm setting the source range to sequence in out. Remember, we set the in and out point just a moment ago. And then just H.264 and just the Premiere Pro 4K for YouTube preset. It's going to give us the little black bars at the top and bottom. But again, that's the way that the 5D Mark IV is shooting the 4K. It's uh, slightly off of 3840 by 2160, uh, but it's still 4K. And that's it. We can choose where we're saving it. I'm just saving it as file name editor to the desktop. It's no big deal. And let's go ahead and export this. And actually, if I scroll down, I'm using hardware encoding because this, again, to get back to the MSI laptop, it is, it's got NVIDIA's GeForce RTX uh, GPU, and it just makes it a lot faster to export and encode and, and work with playback in Premiere. Uh, and we're just doing a VBR one pass with a target bit rate of 40 megabits per second. So all of that great. We're going to go ahead and hit export and we'll watch this a puppy export here. It's only going to take 20 or 30 seconds, maybe not even. Um, and yeah, the laptop is, is pretty awesome. It is super lightweight. It's got a great battery. It's really powerful. Like I said, the GPU is a boss and it's just all kind of set up to run the Adobe software really well and really fast and really flawlessly and, and seamlessly. Again, check out the link down in the description. I think you'll really like it if you're in the market for a new laptop. And there you have it. It, it uh, ended a few seconds ago while I was in the middle of talking. Um, but yeah, that is how to create this little walk-by transition here in Premiere Pro. It's pretty simple and using that crop effect makes it kind of a piece of cake. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, will take something away from it. Make sure you check out my other videos. Thanks for coming in and checking out this one. And for this one, that is going to be it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.